And of course, uh, from uh, west to southern Africa, five people have been left seriously injured after a huge wave crashed into a restaurant in Marina Beach in KwaZulu-Natal, and several guests were injured. According to the municipality in Western Cape, a 93-year-old woman died after she was swept off her feet by a wave while she was watching the surf from a parking lot. It was also confirmed that the body of an unknown man, estimated to be 68 years old, was found at Aston Bay near Jeffreys Bar in the Eastern Cape. Now, meanwhile, South African Weather Service for Castor uh, said springtide was a common occurrence in South Africa. It confirmed the destructive weather would last into Sunday afternoon and Monday morning. Tobela said warnings of damaging winds and destruction to infrastructure along the coast were equally issued in the southern and eastern parts of the country. In the meantime, uh, South Africa Minister for Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities uh, of the ANC has uh, drawn criticism once more after she skipped a meeting to vote on former public prosecutor advocate Bosisiwe Mba Mkwabene, now appointment as public protector earlier this week. According to, after the damaging investigation into the theft of foreign currency from the Fala Fala Farm was released, she didn't follow our party's line and voted against President Cyril Ramaphosa. According to reports, Damnini Zuma will soon appear before the ANC's National Disciplinary Committee. Lamini Zuma is still facing another hearing for voting in favor of an impeachment process against President Cyril Ramaphosa last year. Learners and parents and also teachers in gang-infested neighborhoods in Johannesburg are living in fear as gangsterism is now a big challenge for students who attend schools in Westbury, Rivalia, El Dorado Park and Langate uh, to get to school in a safe and timely manner. The Democratic Alliance in Hautang says it has already written to the Provincial Police Commissioner, to uh, Lieutenant General Elias Weller and the MEC for Community Safety, Faith Mazibiko, uh, seeking more visible policing in these areas. This follows a battle that broke out between two rival gangs last week, where a number of students who were supposedly a part of a fast gun gang we are suspended for entering the school's property without authorization. Meanwhile, numerous complaints have been lodged by concerned parents and educators regarding the safety of learners. Now, Member of Parliament and DA Hautang Shadow MEC for Community Safety, Kresane Boach, joins us for more on this particular development. Thank you so much for your time. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. All right, now, what are your thoughts on the escalating gangsterism issue in Westbury and its impact on the community? Uh, to us, to the Democratic Alliance, this is a big concern that gangsterism has infiltrated our schools um, in Gauteng and that learners are no longer safe to travel to schools. Um, it has an impact on their arrival times and, and whether they even arrive alive at, at the school. And, um, at this moment, the, the students are busy with exams, and they, a lot of them are hindered from writing these exams, so they don't arrive in time, they are nervous, it affects their capabilities um, to perform during these examination periods, and it could have a lasting effect and impacts on their futures. So it is, um, it is important for us to, to address the gangsterism in schools, because this needs to, the, there's, no, there's not supposed to be any place for gangsterism in schools and for violent behavior. Children should be able to feel safe at schools where they can learn in an environment where they can grow and promote themselves and ensure a better future. All right, now what plans uh, are there to address the issue of gangsters affecting the safety and security of learners in Westbury, specifically ensuring that they can reach school on time? Yeah, the gangsterism in areas like Eldorado Park, Ribbley, um, Long Loft, uh, uh, Westbury specifically is not a new issue. This has been going on for a number of years already. 
Um, at the start of this year, uh, and at, we actually started at the end of last year already, the Democratic Alliance submitted a request, a motion to the Community Safety Oversight Committee to call for a committee of inquiry where um, the, the police and the department in the legislature, in parliament, would have to engage all stakeholders, including the community as well as the police, but also other departments, um, to see how what the real problem is and how we can address it to bring an end to gangsterism. This committee of inquiry has, has, um, has not formally been established, although the motion was agreed upon in the Committee um, for Community Safety Oversight, but there was no formal timeline to put together as to when this can happen. And it would be important for us to first get to the bottom of this because to address gangsterism in areas would take an intergovernmental but also interdepartmental approach because we will need to look at the social aspects thereof. But um, for the interim, it would be important to, to deploy as much resources as possible to this area that is um, infested with gang violence and gangsterism and daily shootings in the area. So that there is regular patrols between the schools and the neighborhoods. Um, and they, they need to involve the parents as well in this process between the Department of Education and the Department of Community Safety to take hands and work together um, so that we can ensure that there is sufficient visible policing so that when the kids walk to school that they feel safe. There is um, a safety wardens and police officers on the street patrolling the streets where the kids will be walking. So it's not just about vehicles. So I think the, the main issue for an immediate, um, you know, uh, resolution would be to ensure that we deploy additional resources to to these schools. And this is why the Democratic right. Alliance has written to the MEC as well as the Provincial Police Commissioner for Gauteng to address the matter. All right. What role can uh, educational institutions play in addressing the issue of gangsterism? And are there any plans to provide support systems or resources for schools and learners affected by this problem? Well, um, a lot of it, but they now have started recruiting school children to become part of these gangs. And once they fall um, into this trap of gangsterism and they form part of, they become a member of this gang, uh, chances are that they will remain a member of this gang even once they finish a school, if they ever get the opportunity to finish school. And this doesn't just completely consume their life. So I think the very first thing that will need to happen is uh, for the schools to start to have positive engagements with the parents, um, to identify what is the signs that they need to look out for, involve the Department for Social Development, um, to start doing uh, rehabilitation uh, in these schools with these kids and to assist them, um, you know, to get back onto the right track uh, away from the gangs um, and also to ensure that there is proper fencing up at the schools and proper security at the schools. I visited a school uh, about a month ago where while I was busy with an oversight, there was a hole in the fence and, um, and the gang members just sneaked through the fence into the school in daylight during school hours. And this is something that, that needs to be addressed and the school needs to take responsibility for that as well. But it is an interdepartmental um, a situation that a concern and we will need to get the various different departments around the table, the Department of Education, Department of Social Development, Department of Community Safety, so that we can look at how to address this problem, problem properly, but also involve external stakeholders, the CPF, the parents, um, you know, and, and any other organisation in the community that can take the hands of with the school um, so that we can address gangsterism in schools. All right, thank you so much for your time, Abosh. It's a pleasure.